I'm Anna Martinez. I'm a paediatric dermatologist here at Great Ormond Street. Um, I've been here sort of running the paediatric service actually since it was um, became a highly specialised service in 2003. Um, but I've always had a, a passion for uh, EB since I actually first met a patient in 1996, so a long, long time ago. So I've, my whole working career has been actually in the field of paediatric EB. When I first met the patient with EB, I remember on the ward, on our old ward, the complexities and the, and the amount of issues every day that they had to deal with and the amount of people that are needed to try and make the care the best as possible was what really drew me to, to looking after this disease and, and making it sort of my main area of work really. EB, epidermolysis spilosa, is a genetic disorder which, although it affects the skin primarily, it's a multisystemic disease and by that I mean it affects many, many organs, not just the skin. And it's a disease that initially, um, often at birth, can have pretty minimum effects on the skin with blistering and delayed wound healing, which can be a very big problem. But over time, because of the wounds that then take longer and longer to heal and the larger surface areas that are effective, it causes a lot of inflammation inside. And that inflammation, the constant fire that's happening internally because of the wounds and the infections and the colonization drives a huge number of, uh, or causes a huge number of complications that gets worse over time. For instance, anemia becomes a more increasing problem um, as the children get older, as well as effects on many, many organs such as the bones and bone health. Again, because of inflammation, driving and stopping the bones and the bones healing and producing more bones properly. The effects as well because of inflammation, growth and developmental progress that normally happens. Um, it affects internally in the gut and the GI system. So many, many other organs that often people think EB, okay, well it affects the skin, but it, it doesn't. It increasingly affects not just the skin, but many, many more organs over time. EB is, I think, and I think many of my colleagues, all of them in this hospital, and we all look after very complicated diseases, would be probably one of the most severe diseases that anyone comes across in its severe form. Um, and it's, it's, it, it's cruel, it's extremely cruel. Um, I think the huge difficulty is, is that it gets worse over time. So you, you're like running a race, but you, you can never really catch up, it feels. Um, so everyone's trying and trying and trying, but we just don't have the right medicines. We don't have the cure. Um, so we're trying our very best to buy time for some better treatment to come along, some novel ways of wound care. Um, but the progress is so slow and it's, it's, it's painful actually still here 30 years down the line. And although we've improved a lot, the day-to-day -day care, we just still don't have better treatments that we're still having to watch four or five hours of dressing changes that families have to go through. Um, and when they come often to say, well, what should we do? How can we make things better? It's really difficult to actually have to say, I don't know sometimes, you know. Um, I don't have anything better at the moment. We can change things around a little bit, but it's really difficult, I think, as a professional to, to not have the answer. I mean, it's hard to imagine what, what it, it, it is and how, what it means for a, a family and a child living with EB, that despite working in the field of EB for, for uh, forever. Um, you know, we, we have and the experience that we have, but the day-to-day -day actual living with EB and the courage and the determination and the, the strength to continue is, is 
incredible and it's it's um it's mind blowing actually when you when you think about the fact that when you know they come and the positivity and the energy and the enthusiasm and the 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 the, how brave they are, really, to 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 continue. Um, but you know, we owe it to them to deliver the best care that we can, um, because we don't have a cure at the moment. But what we can do is make sure that the complications that well, first of all, that we can predict the complications so that we are there and we can detect them very early, and that we look after and manage them in the best way possible. And that can be. Um, looking at other diseases and learning from them. It can be asking colleagues in, in the other side of the world if we feel that somebody has more experience than us. So I'm really privileged to work in a hospital like this hospital because we are a team here of experts. Uh, and we're, I'm a cog in a big wheel of EV that um, over the years has built up the expertise of, of looking after every little aspect of the really complicated disease. And with a disease as complex as, as EB, you need everyone to be working together so that the wheel rolls and it's not one person that plays an individual or the most important part, we all play a part together. And I think what is what I love about the team that we have here is that everyone shares the passion of looking after the families and the patients with EB. And everyone also wants to do the, their very best. So it's a real sort of privilege to, to work with them. Um, I feel emotional when I talk about it, but it, I mean, it is emotional because it's, it's a long journey. Um, and uh, many of the families we look after from birth until 16 or 17. So there are many ups and many downs during the, the, journey, the EB journey. Um, and so that's why team working is, is so important because sometimes a particular member of the team will be having a particular issue with mobility or difficulty with pain management. And often they can feel like that they're not helping and yet it's the bigger picture to, to say that we're all working together um, and equally if at some point when we're offering thousands of different suggestions to families that have 24 hours in the day they can't always do everything um, then we, we, we shouldn't be ever judgmental about the care that we offer um, it's always a choice and and I think that's something that you learn over time when you have such a complicated illness that um, you always have to listen to the families in front of you, to the patient, um, and it's forever changing. So on Monday, there may be one issue that's a big problem, but by Friday, there's another issue that needs to be listened to and, and addressed. The exciting world of drug repurposing is open to us for, for instance, topical gentamicin for wounds that might be helpful. Um, but I think that the way forward for complicated EB in terms of therapies is going to be a combination of many different therapies. And it may be drug repurposing for itch, but it also might be cell therapy through a drip systemically for inflammation, could be gene therapy if there's a chronic wound. So it'll be tailored made combination of therapies for um, patients with EB rather than one individual drug. I think it's a disease that's so complex, it's going to require and it will require a combination of therapies.